Salam. Hello. Welcome back to Persica, Persian Things. For today's topic, I've chosen to look at just one artifact from ancient Iran. It's quite a large one. It's the wonderful statue of Darius the Great, which was discovered at Susa. I hope you enjoy it. The statue stands in the National Museum of Iran in Tehran, where it takes pride of place. It is made from a material called grey wacky, which was ex excavated from um, the stone mines in Wadi Hammamat in Egypt. The stone is very specific, in fact, to that place. And remarkably, this standing sculpture of Darius is the only three-dimensional, large-scale sculpture that survives from ancient Iran. The statue was discovered on Christmas Eve in 1972 by a French archaeological team who were working in Susa at the time. It was, in fact, one of a pair of statues, one of which has totally disappeared. And you can see that, unfortunately, this statue of Darius is also headless. It suffered much damage in antiquity. In the province of Elam, stood Susa, one of the foremost cities of the Persian Empire, an imperial capital of great splendour, and possibly the original home or birthplace of Darius the Great, who certainly lavished the city with a major building programme of palaces, including a great apadana or throne hall, and, as you can see here, a royal gateway. Today it's very hard to imagine the splendours of ancient Susa, but it was here, at this portal, that the two statues of Darius were set up. Everyone who entered into the palace had to pass through this gateway and would have seen the majestic images of the great king himself, in all of his glory. Gateways were always important in ancient Near Eastern cities and palaces, and Darius utilised his to project his own royal image of power, stability, dynastic superiority and longevity. And yet the statue and its companion were not originally intended for Susa. They were made and created in Egypt and set up in a temple there. This was part of Darius's imperial policy in Egypt. He was happy to have himself depicted as here as an Egyptian pharaoh. And the statue of Darius actually plays with these two concepts. It is both Egyptian and Persian. The statue looks like an Egyptian-style sculpture, but of course is dressed in Persian clothing. The stance of Darius echoes those of ancient pharaohs, sometimes with the arm bent at the crook of the elbow, and you can see on the details of the clothing, there are inscriptions in Egyptian hieroglyphs and in old Persian cuneiform. It is, in fact, what we might call a bilingual statue. Darius speaks to us in two kinds of languages, and he presents himself as a Persian great king and as an Egyptian pharaoh. The statue is crafted in Egyptian style, but the clothing worn by Darius is distinctly Persian. It is his Persian court robe. Darius the Great stands on a block, and you can see on the detail that it is depicted with dozens of individual figures, with their cartouches below them. Every part of the Persian Empire is represented here. Each cartouche contains Egyptian hieroglyphs naming different provinces of the Persian Empire, while above, individuals in national dress represent those characters. If you look, each individual raises his hands as though he is supporting Darius as he walks above them. This is a motif that we find in Persepolis and also on the tomb of Darius, at Naqshirustam. United together, the peoples of the empire support Darius, who stands above him. He is almost like a light helium balloon which they lift up. 
The image of unity is there on the statue too, in the figure of the Nile god Harpy, who is seen uniting Upper and Lower Egypt, in the way that Darius also unites Egypt with Persia. Sadly, of course, the statue of Darius the Great lacks a head. We have no portrait features here, and we can only speculate from the remains of other sculptures, like this very delicate head showing curled beard, what that head would have looked like. Perhaps it was like this, a small miniature head in limestone, which is now in the Musée de Louvre in Paris. What about the appearance of the head, then? Did Darius wear a Persian beard and a Persian crown? Or did he appear as a clean-shaven, ancient pharaoh? Was there perhaps an amalgamation of the two forms? Appearing as a Persian in pharaonic form was not unusual. This is a coin showing Artaxerxes III as a Persian pharaoh with the double crown of Egypt. The presence of two statues at the entranceway to the gateway perhaps allowed Darius to play with different themes. Perhaps in one statue he appeared purely Persian and in another purely Egyptian. Perhaps he synchronised the images, blending Egyptian and Persian ideas. The statues of Darius were brought to Susa by Xerxes, who set them up at the portal into the city of Susa as magnificent displays of the power of the Persian Empire, the fact that they had conquered Egypt, the oldest civilization on earth, but now the Persians were masters of the world. Exploring royal ideology through material culture and art is a very effective way of accessing the Persian mindset. Material culture is a vital form of source material for anybody studying ancient Iran. It speaks volumes. This statue, as fragmentary as it is, allows us to experience the way in which the Persians conceived of themselves and of their empire. Well, friends, there it is, the amazing statue of Darius the Great from Susa. I really hope you get to see it sometime. It really is worth seeing in the round. Until next time, Khodafez, so long.